Homeostasis, what is it? So homeostasis, this definition we need to know. It's the ability of an organism to maintain a constant internal environment. And all of that should be there if you're asked about this. So what is the internal environment? So organisms have no control over their external environment. External environment for an amoeba would be fresh water. For us, fresh air. Our internal environment, so the surroundings of cells in multicellular organisms, for example, in humans. So the internal environment there is the extracellular tissue fluid. So it surrounds every cell in the body and that provides an internal environment. So all organisms have the ability to control their internal environment or their cell conditions, but to some extent. So let's look at homeostasis now in a bit more detail. So as mentioned, it's the ability of an organism to maintain a constant internal environment. It involves organs and organ systems working together and these are all coordinated by the brain. So your body and its individual cells need the right conditions to perform at their best. So often requires an organism to exchange materials with its environment. So a cell's delicately balanced chemical reactions work best within narrow limits of temperature, pH, and solute concentration. So think of enzymes. What's an en our enzymes, what's their optimum temperature at which they're working best? What's the optimum pH at which it's working best? So a cell's delicately balanced chemical reactions work best within limits of temperature, pH, and solute concentration. So the importance of homeostasis, the importance is it allows for normal metabolic reactions to occur. It can maintain constant conditions within the cell. Okay, so for example, oxygen, carbon dioxide or glucose concentration. We can remove these wastes, temperature and pH. It can also help to eliminate toxins. So I would know I would really learn the three important, the three things of importance for homeostasis, but two should be enough. Now, cells can exchange materials with their environment by diffusion or active transport, osmosis or active transport. So to improve their rate of exchange, larger organisms like ourselves require special features such as well, for us anyway, a respiratory system with a large surface area, flat structures, excretory systems which take materials from the body, and for, uh, sorry, take materials from the body to the body surface. Large organisms like ourselves, we require a circulatory system to carry materials over long distances. So organisms associated with homeostasis is our skin. Our skin has preferred body temperature of 37. Our kidneys, our kidneys want to maintain a blood plasma of pH 7.4 and our lungs wants to maintain levels of oxygen and uh, levels of oxygen within the body. So remember, homeostasis is the ability of an organ to maintain a constant internal environment. Now, factors necessary for homeostasis. We would like a temperature of 37 degrees blood pressure of between 120 over 80, a blood pH of 7.4, plasma concentration, so the correct water and salt balances, and uh, certain CO2 and oxygen concentrations. So how do organisms maintain homeostasis? So temperature regulation, let's look at that first. So temperature regulation in plants. If a plant is too hot during the summer, then it will increase transpiration in an effort to cool down temperature regulations in us, in animals. So temperature regulation in animals is a bit more complex. So it, animals can be divided into two groups, our endo, uh, endotherms and our ectotherms. Our endoterm, endotherms are animals with a constant body temperature. Okay, and then our ectotherms are animals whose body temperature varies with environmental temperatures. pH regulation. So levels of pH levels must be tightly regulated in all organisms and this enables the enzymes to function at their optimum. So if an animal's blood pH, 
sorry, in animals, blood pH must be, must be kept at 7.4. So the acidity of the blood is controlled by the lungs and by the kidneys. What do plants rely on? So they rely on the soil being the correct pH to enable their full growth and reproduction. But with temperature regulation and pH regulation, what we want is to keep the pH and the temperature suitable for enzyme reaction. Glucose level regulation. So glucose levels in animals must be maintained at a concentration of approximately uh, one gram per liter. If it drops too low, coma and death can result. If glucose levels are too high, it can cause some damage to blood vessels and to nerves. So glucose levels are controlled by two hormones, insulin, okay, so that's going to lower the blood glucose, and glycogen, that's going to raise the blood glucose. Osmoregulation, so osmoregulation is the maintenance of the correct amount of water in the body. So the kidneys will excrete any excess water and conserve water in the body if it's lacking water. So if we're going to look at uh, two questions now. So let's look here at um, a sample paper. So the graph shows the variation. The graph shows variations in the human body temperature over a number of days. So what is the minimum temperature recorded? So we're going to look down here and what is our minimum temperature recorded, recorded and reading over here. So the minimum is going to be here. So the bottom here, sorry, is 35.6. Then I have here 35.8. So in the middle of that is going to be 35.7. What's the maximum temperature recorded? So at the top, I have 37.6, but there's nothing touching 37.6. Underneath, I have 37.4. So the max temperature there, if I bring that over, is going to be uh, 37.5. State one difference. Suggest a reason for the difference between body temperature during period X. Here we have period X and the same uh, period on previous days. So suggest a reason. So here, here, what could be happening? So the person, they could be exercising. But they also like that also, they could be sick, they could be ill. What is the source of heat that keeps the body temperature at a fairly constant temperature? So what is the source of heat that keeps the body at a fairly constant temperature? And that is your metabolic reactions. Stay two responses that result when the body temperature begins to drop. So this will be linked in when we do skin and we'll do skin with excretion. And what we'll do, so what do we do if the body temperature drops? For the first thing you're going to move and you probably shiver. Okay, you're shivering and you might find also that the hairs on your arms will stand up and your blood vessels in your um, skin are going to constrict. They're going to become narrow. So we're going to say we shiver. Our blood vessels in the skin constrict. To constrict means to become narrow and our hairs on our arms may stand up. Explain briefly why sweating assist, assists in the shedding of excess heat. So sweat is evaporating and what it's actually doing is, is cooling us down. And by cooling us, so the sweat will evaporate, land on our skin, and what it wants, the hair will lie flat, and what it wants to do is to cool us down, to drop down the body temperature. So sweat evaporates. which causes the body temperature and one more question on this is 2011 so in 2011 you're asked what is an endotherm so an endotherm are animals whose body temperature varies with um, environmental temperature 
I'm not going to have enough space. So animals whose body temperature varies with environmental temperature. What word is used to describe animals who are not endo endotherms? And that's your ectotherms. Suggest an advantage of being an endotherm. So that's your temperature always is always good for enzyme action. So the graph shows how the graph shows daily variations of human body temperature over three days. Okay, so we can see it's ranging here. What's your lowest? What's up your highest? And what's happening here? So what is the maximum range of body temperature under normal conditions as shown in the graph? So it's a maximum range. So your maximum range, if we're looking here, right, about my. So our maximum range would be from around 35.7, it's about halfway, to what's the top? 37, is it halfway? Point, 37.6 degrees Celsius, 0.7. At what time each day does the body temperature drop to its lowest? So we can see between, if we look here at our times, what's it dropping to the lowest? So it's really, we can see between about 3 to 6 a.m. Suggest a reason for the drop in temperature at this time. What are we all really doing? We're sleeping. And if we're sleeping, this is a low metabolism. Children typically have higher body temperature than adults, suggesting a reason for this. So children are a lot more ad active than adults. So their growing is another thing and that they also have a higher metabolism. So a few answers here. So they are more active. They are growing they have higher metabolism. So when you're looking at homeostasis, what you're also going to do is you're also going to link in the skin and the skin is going to be covered in with excretion. And we'll do some answers questions on the skin and those questions you'll see will have been linked in with homeostasis as well.